I do hope that before you all leave, you take photos of this, because I think what you need to do is go through each of these things and start figuring out your action plan for addressing each of these things. I will say, too, that decisions happen with those who show up in the room. And so if the room is designed with certain decision makers, that is what you're going to be, be given. And so your primary objective, I think, is to change who's in the room. If you think about decisions, they, they exist on a bell curve, right? To take care of most of the people, ideally. Decisions and policies exist on a bell curve to take care of most of the people. Knowing that on the ends of this decision, someone's going to get screwed because it's hard to make up a, a rule that take, takes care of everyone. The problem that we have in this country and on our boards is that most of the decision makers are fairly homogenous, right? They're the same group of people, the same age, the same um, socioeconomic level. And so their, their decisions, exactly, their decisions exist like this, where the people who are being taken care of are the people that look like the decision makers. And the people that don't look like them are really getting screwed. You have two choices. In that instance, your homogenous decision-making body can become fiercely anti-oppressive. And so that every decision they make takes care of the people who need it the most because these people have the resources to get what they need elsewhere. You don't have to worry about them. Or you change who's in the room. And you can't do it when you bring in one or two people at a time. You have to do this en masse because you need enough people in the room to affect the decision-making. If you think about that photo that came out seven years ago, the Congressional Committee on Women's Reproductive Issues, all white men making decisions about your bodies. What would happen if they brought one woman in that room? Would she get anything done? So why do we think this is going to happen when we start diversifying one person at a time? It's not going to happen, right? And in my position, uh, to get laws or to get funding, I have to go to the one legislator I know is going to be on my side and then get that person with my help to enroll every single other legislation, legislator one at a time. So that's coffees, that's meetings, that's going to their district, that's visiting, that's building a relationship, and hopefully I'm building up enough consensus. So I suggest to you that when you start revising your boards, politic Go one board member at a time, and the people that you don't want on your board, make them miserable so that they leave. <laughs> politic, politic, politic. All right, so I'm probably going to get in trouble for saying that. <laughs> All right, um, I also want to talk a little bit about this, this donor thing and this fundraising thing, because I think it's a myth. I think it's a myth. One, if you think about your whole donor pool, your board only represents a small part of that. I encourage you to do the math. If it's true, so there's research out there that says boards should raise 22 to 25% of the annual fund, not the full budget, just the annual fund, which for many of us is 50-50, right? Contributed to earned. So they're raising 10% of that. So if you're a million dollar organization, they're raising $100,000. Well, they're supposed to be raising 22, 25. Most are raising about nine to 10%. They're raising about $100,000. If the executive director or the artistic director is spending one whole quarter of their year, three months of the year managing them, subtract that from the $100,000. Then subtract all the other time that the staff is spending helping you manage the board. Then subtract all the money you could have raised if you had that three months back. Then subtract all the ticket sales you could have earned if your board wasn't contributing to why your organization might be predominantly white. Then it may be a loss. The board contributions may be a loss or very little return on investment. I encourage you to do the math. I think this is a myth. I think it's a myth. But go through each one, one at a time, and just figure out what your action plan is. I think it's that important. Foundations, you mean funding foundations? Call them. I'm a, I'm a grant maker. Call them and say, stop doing this. You're hurting us. Call them.
privilege of wealth. <laughs> I mean, we know it exists. Decouple this from your board, from your board responsibility. Take it out. You don't need it. Don't need it, my friends. There are other ways to make money. And if they want to contribute, they will contribute. If they don't, if they want to buy their seat on the board, then I think you don't want them on your board. 